What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. As you can tell by the title of this video, we just got our hands on a new solar hybrid heat pump and we're going to be starting a new series on this channel. Uh, getting this thing all unboxed, installed, going through the usual stuff we've done with the EG4. So this one was sent by a company called Eco Solaris. They're out of Quebec, Canada. They're a solar company. They make all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, they're a little bit into the hydronic heating stuff as well. So Definitely give them a, uh, a follow, check them out. They've got some cool products. So we are gonna get this opened up, have a look at it, compare some key differences between this and the EG4. This is a 12,000 BTU unit, as you can see down there in the bottom right corner, which is the same as my EG4. So we'll be able to put them head to head as far as efficiency, output capacity, stuff like that. So let's save the talking until we get this thing unboxed. Okay guys, here we have it. This is the Eco Solaris 12,000 BTU solar hybrid heat pump. So right off the bat, we are uh, a 12,000 BTU, a one ton. It's pretty similar in size to the uh, 12,000 BTU EG4 you guys are very familiar with, the one I have out back. So this one actually comes in 12,000 and 18,000 BTU, which is a ton and a half. So that's a nice middle of the road size. If you're not quite looking for a two ton, you might be looking for something a little larger than a one ton. Over here we have the solar direct connections, the MC4s, you can plug your panels right into there. We'll get into this uh, rating plate here in a quick sec. On the back we have a very similar setup to the EG4, no grill on the back. Once again, always like to see a grill, but I'm actually looking into uh, a little grill kit for both of them that would fit these holes, something you could add down the road just for a little bit of extra protection. Once they're installed, not usually a big deal, but Definitely doesn't hurt to have a grill on there. In the front, we have a metal grill as opposed to the plastic grill on the EG4. So overall, pretty nice build quality, looks nice. Let's get into the specs. So on the rating plate, you're gonna find two major differences between the Eco Solaris and the EG4. One of them being right here, this big yellow sticker. This unit is actually pre-charged with R32. So come January 1st, 2025, that's gonna be a big deal. So Eco Solaris getting ahead of the curve, putting R32 in this, it's a pretty good decision. It doesn't make a huge impact to you as the end user, but come January 1st, companies are no longer gonna be allowed to ship R410A units into North America. So having R32 already in this is a pretty good move. Now right up here you'll notice this is also 230 volts AC, so you're not going to be able to put this on the 120 volt circuit, but there are some benefits of being on 230. You have a DC input of 100 to 380, which is pretty comparable to the EG4. Down here you see we are R32, uh, and we have a SEA rating of 23.4. Guessing we have the line set. Oh, oh nice! Got a little bit of Eco Solera swag. That's a snapback. Nice hat. Currently wearing a snapback of the same style. That's very much my style of hat. Looks like we got a t-shirt. That's awesome. Here's our line set. What do we have here? Oh, we got a coffee mug. Nice. Thank you guys, that's awesome. I can't guarantee that comes with every one of these. It might, but I don't know for sure. So. Thank you guys, thank you Martin, that's awesome. So uh, here we have the line set, we have quarter inch and three eighths. This is not a pre-charged line set, this is like the EG4's original version. You will need a vacuum to pull this down, a nitrogen pressure test, all the normal stuff you'd see on any mini split or central AC, you are gonna have to have refrigeration tools. It can be done DIY, it's a little bit less DIY than the second generation EG4, but um, yeah, let's open up the head unit here, we'll see what that's all about. All right, so here we have the indoor unit all unboxed. You can see it's almost a bit of a cylindrical shape here, a little bit of a unique shape to it. I haven't seen that before. Bit of a chrome trim ring on the end. That's pretty fancy. Down here, this was taped up. Obviously I've opened that already. We have the R32 label once again, our indoor rating plate for anybody curious about the specs. Let's see, we have 380 volts DC listed there once again under the hood. Pretty standard. We've got the typical filters. Our electrical connections are behind that door. And that's pretty much it for the indoor unit. Um, we also receive the 
wiring kit, the manual with remote and batteries. So I'm gonna pop that manual open. We'll see how in depth the manual is. I, that was a big complaint on the EG4s was the manual was a little bit lacking. So we'll have a look at this one. There is one more accessory on the way. Uh, at least I think it's on the way. I'm gonna double check with them before I get too carried away on it. But uh, basically it's a module to allow this thing to run directly on a 48 volt battery, which I know a ton of you wanted on the original EG4. I got that question so many times. Can this run on 48 volt? So these guys have come out with a product. It's not finished yet. I think that's why I don't have it, but they're in the works of putting together uh, a little module to hook this thing straight to a battery. Okay, so inside the manual pamphlet, we actually have four separate manuals. We have a Wi-Fi and an app manual. They use a very similar app to the EG4. It's developed by Tuya. They are working on their own uh, sort of in-house app. It's not ready yet. As I said, this is pretty much a brand new unit. So some of this stuff is still in the works, but we have a manual here for the remote. Pretty good manual, good uh, English. It's not like a Chinese to English translation. Everything is pretty clear. We have the installation manual. Pretty good info in that one. And then this is the user manual. Have the temperature ranges right here. Very similar to the EG4 once again. Um, heating mode down to zero degrees Celsius. The EG4 is rated for that as well, but we all know it does work well beyond that. So it'll be very interesting to uh, get this thing into heating season, see what kind of temperatures it's working good down to. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to put it through its paces. So pretty good documentation overall. Well, I'm a little bit curious, guys. I want to see what's inside this. I'm not going to waste any time. We're going to pop the top on this thing, get it opened up, and just have a quick look inside. Okay guys, so here we have the inside of the unit. Now, right off the bat, there are definitely some differences. You notice over here, we do not have a standalone MPPT inside the cabinet like we do on the EG4. I'll link my other video pulling apart the EG4 if you wanna take a look back at that and compare the two. Um, but yeah, we just have a single board over here. You can see we've got a nice air-cooled heat sink, which I love to see. Some of the Carrier MIDEA products are going suction gas cooled heat sinks on the boards having a lot of problems, at least I've seen so far, but we have a highly compressor that's listed on the website. I'm not gonna rip this all apart, um, but they do list a highly compressor on the website, probably the same compressor as in the EG4. We have our little reversing valve there. Our EXV is probably somewhere down in the back. We've got two transformers right here, uh, and then our input block there for our line voltage and our DC voltage, so. Uh, yeah, overall similar, but quite a few differences as you are probably putting together right now. Um, if you're not familiar with this, that is because it's pretty much brand new. This is not the first one to roll off the floor, but it is pretty new. They've just spent a lot of time and money getting all their certifications. This is Energy Star, ETL, CETL, and NRCAN listed. So lots of certifications on it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see this thing in action. I'm going to get to the installation here pretty shortly. This one is actually going to be going out here in the garage. So I think I'm going to mount it right up here above the TV, move that canopy out of there and, uh, do it above the garage. I have another 48 volt project coming into the garage here pretty soon. So keep an eye out for that. I have been lacking on the videos lately, but I've got lots of new stuff coming to the channel. So make sure you check it out in the near future. Um, yeah, maybe pop by the Eco Solaris website. Let them know that they are on your radar after watching this video. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.